Так, ну, я думаю, что все в основном собрались. Okay, I think almost everyone's here. Let us start. And uh, those who are late, they will be coming in the middle. Today I'm going to tell you about the storing engines that may be connected to Postgres. They do not exist as yet, probably you know that, so this is the um, cutting edge of our technology and this is uh, the edge we are moving towards in our development in Postgres. I would like to start with a disclaimer stating that, well, right now I'm going to present you a review, but at the same time I'm going to, well, uh, at the same time a lot of companies that are de performing development in Postgres, um, they, I will mention them and maybe I will mention something that will further be implemented in a different way. So this is a living process. So please um, just keep that in mind, okay? So I will start with an introduction about what Postgres needs, this storing engines, why we cannot be satisfied with one engine and just go and develop it. Postgres has only one engine. It is often criticized, as you might notice even during this conference, in fact. If we take the only storage engine of Postgres and develop it up to the level where it uh, satisfies everyone, probably this is not uh, possible. Or And that is why we need several storage engines and in fact uh, it has uh, at the very beginning been designed as an expandable DB and um, it uh, was supposed to be adaptable to uh, operator and uh, well from that point of view having only one storage engine in, po in Postgres considering the concept of expandability it looks like a significant downside. Another important reason for developing storage engine is that companies are already in fact involved in developing engines but they do not have sufficient interface. For example, Postgres Professional develops in-memory OLTP, Enterprise DB develops Zheap, Turn Quadrant uh, developed columnar on disk engine, Fujitsu develops columnar in memory engine, and Citus has a columnar on disk engine. They are working on it. So the pressure is quite high, and uh, well, we understand that a result, as a result of negotiations between all the parties, they will come up with uh, an API that uh, will satisfy all of them, not probably in the first version, but uh, probably it, all the engines will, will be able to connect all of them to it. Now, let us talk specifically on who develops what. Recently, you probably saw at Postgres Planet a post of Robert Haas, where he talks about undo log and uh, the way that uh, the possibility of uh, working without uh, vacuum and actually uh, it uh, helps us to solve VSCC problems and Enterprise uh, DB actually they are working on the engine and soon they will present their heap engine for Postgres with block. In Postgres Professional in our company we have an engine that is part of our work Postgres Pro Enterprise and uh, this is an engine that is made at foreign data wrapper interface and uh, it uses in-memory table. It means that uh, this is the table that is, tables are stored in RAM. We make snapshot and uh, record wall providing in-memory and persistence. We can see how in mem using in-memory can in fact impact the scalability at multi-core machine. The 
nuance here is that uh, at this scale, a lot of time is taken by the communication between the server and the client. So, making uh, an action at with the one query is easier than and simpler than making it with four queries. We tested TCP that, uh, and uh, we tested it in two options. We took simple PC bench and the whole transaction of PCB wrapped into one function. And uh, here the communication between the client and the server is reduced significantly. If we use inbuilt Postgres engine, then here, in fact, we have the same performance. be that a transaction in the function or in the interactive mode. The situation with in-memory is different. We have a two times growth due to using the in-memory engine in the interactive mode. And if we perform a transaction of the whole function, then we are approximately five times quicker than the inbuilt Postgres disk engine. I often hear feedback uh, like in-memory engines should be quicker by several times and uh, yours is only five times quicker. Well, when you compare that, you need to take into consideration that optimization of Postgres engine, well, a lot of effort was invested into it. And uh, this uh, new engine it hasn't yet taken that many efforts. And uh, this performance, in fact, uh, was gained with the same architecture. So it is not the case when you have a lot of threads and every thread has its own part of data and uh, your application magically connects to the right thread. Uh, it is nothing like that. It uses regular architecture of a relational database. Another storage that was developed by Postgres Professional. This is the so-called VOPS extension or parquet layout. Well, what is about parquet layout? I think you understand what parquet is. Uh, it means that uh, you have one plate and it is divided into several strips. So parquet layout is a compromise, in fact, between column storage and uh, temporary and page storage. So you have the same page with the same data, but these data are transparent. So you have uh, at the beginning of page uh, the values of uh, columns 1, 2, 3 and 4. And you can use the same index indices you use for conventional storage. But at the same time, you have a good gain in performance of CPU. By benchmarks, we can see that uh, the gain is almost four times in performance. This engine uses foreign data wrappers, interface, and uh, custom nodes. Another development for our company, uh, this is the one of the types of uh, LSM tree. LSM tree is used as an index for a table that is stored in a usual heap, but in, in future it can be used not only for the index, but also for to store the lines of the table. You can store them in LSM. And, Everyone who implements LSM, they actually do that. Fujitsu. They develop their in-memory column engine for analytics. At TPCH, it shows good results. Here, well, the results are in small font. But here is the link. You can download the slides and read the original Fujitsu presentation. One of the people who is now taking part in development of uh, engines, Harbabu Kulni from Fujitsu Australia, he actually took part in the development of this in-memory column engine. 
tour FDW. This is another column storage. And uh, in fact, it does not optimize the processor, but it saves a lot on input output because you do not have to take out the columns you do not need for some aggregates and it actually provides compression. You can compress input output several times. Second quadrant. They are also working on their column storing engine, storage engine. I have not seen any release on that, but this column storage engine Alvaro Herrera takes part in this project. Well, in fact, I'm coming here right from FOSDEM conference, and uh, there we had a meeting of uh, Postgres developers. It was, uh, we were not very numerous. You, as you can see, we are only 11 here. Ten are on in the picture, and Oleg Bartonov, who is taking the shot. Uh, let us not forget about him. He is now making his best to make it to us, flying through Warsaw. At this developers' meeting, we had an opportunity to discuss the topic of storage engines, and um, we decided to create a roadmap where we are going to list the steps that are to be implemented from the first iteration to the next ones and this roadmap should describe which of the stakeholders is responsible for what. In fact, I haven't yet approved this roadmap with all the stakeholders, but I'm giving you the freshest updates on this matter. Well, first, let me talk about the basic idea. What kind of storage engines are we going to have? If this is uh, an autonomous storage engine that can be connected, it, can, uh, it should uh, identify the way how it scans the table, how it changes the table, and uh, we can expect that scanning the table should be performed through consequent transferring of pages with specific uh, tuples, uh, with specific number of lines. Well, probably uh, it will not be very much different from the current heap. So we need to be able to define how we scan tables and how we change tables. Now, we need to be able to come up with various implementations of MVCC because this is one of the uh, motivating factors. This is an, uh, we want an alternative implementation of MVCC, for example, through undo lock. Engines should be full-fledged and they need to have a possibility to implement something new. And um, as to more generic things, uh, uh, general things, uh, they need to have uh, transactions and snapshots and uh, WLs because you need to be able to work with uh, transactions and snapshots, you need to be able to work with uh, tables of both engines and uh, as for wells, if they are different, if transactions are different and uh, there is two PC between them, it will be not one DB MS uh, with uh, two engine, it will be several DB MSs uh, integrated uh, under an umbrella of a meta DB MS. And we want an integrated solution. We had several versions uh, as to what we could start with implementing this interface. We, in fact, outlined two possible solutions, either extend FDW interf 
interface because foreign data wrappers, they have quite rich functionalities. They have uh, writable performance. We can write and read from them. But the drawback of this approach is that, uh, well, although we have uh, quite a lot of possibilities inside the FDW, FDWs will be at the same time poor in functionality. For example, for recovery of uh, FDW, we will have to uh, provide uh, and develop a specific code for that and uh, in order to provide for their transactional integrity and well, there are difficulties to that. The alternative approach is to replace heap in some way, uh, to replace it in Postgres. And uh, this pluggable engine should be a first class citizen. Uh, it, it should be uh, just an alternative heap that is able to support everything we need. But at the same time, well, in this case, these engines will be limited in their functions. We will have to provide to perform deep refactoring of Postgres code to be able to support something else. As to what kind of refactoring it might call for, well, that's what I'm going to talk about. But in general, the community opted more for the second alternative because this is a, a more Postgres way to do it right first and then expand the functionality. The plans of uh, implementation may be set in three stages. Stage number one, where we support the engines when the database line is identified by TID. This is how top tuples are addressed from Postgres index. But at the same time, we are going to support alternative uh, implementation of FVCC, and then we could use uh, that heap, for example, that are developed by Enterprise DB. Stage number two create a storage that have other line identificators, not TEDs, but uh, eight bytes uh, or well, n line without fixed length. And if we provide this kind of support, then we could uh, come up with an indexed organized table. Stage number three, provide the support for tables where lines do not have a specific identificator identifier that we could work with, for example, columnar engine. But there will be some identificator in this table. However, columnar way of storage, it does not assume having an identif identificator that uh, enables us to find a specific line. But, well, we could come up with this kind, but then uh, this kind of identificator, but uh, that would impact the performance. Another thing is about writer headlock. To have a pluggable engine, it has to be recoverable uh, with replication, so it should support wall. Here we have several solutions to this problem. Community opposes extensions identifying their redo function and uh, recovery of Postgres uh, depending on the recovery. The first option is that uh, we could have an inbuilt engine. It will use its own API, but uh, this is an inbuilt engine and it has its own redo function. Another option is a ger generic wall. We have a, a way of producing walls that do not uh, require redo function and uh, it can identify the page and uh, record it in the wall. It is uh, universal and in fact it enables us to implement its index methods of access inside extensions. 
we have already implemented this mechanism and in fact we have for example extension RU that uses index which is inside the extension and uses generic well. This generic well has the problems, uh, it generates a lot of well traffic as it is not efficient uh, in processing lines of data. We are looking at a patch from our developer, Oleg Evanov, on that matter, and we hope that it will make it to Postgres 11. But still, even in this situation, generic wall introduces some kind of overhead. And there is a third, third way. It is two-phase recovery. The essence of two-phase recovery is in uh, the first uh, use of uh, the nodes uh, from the whole system catalog where you can uh, take take the information or gain access to the API of uh, the storage and uh, on the next step of recovery you can restore all uh, uh, the storages and you can give the user a possibility to influence the recovery if the user knows that uh, this storage, uh, this particular storage is, uh, is important, he can uh, switch it off just to preserve the data. One more interesting thing is how Postgres is blocking tuples. This logic of lock of tuple is based in executor in the HIP. The versions are staying one behind each other. The executor tries to lock one version Still, the executor becomes the link to the next version and tries to lock it. And in the end, the executor can find the first version and lock this first version. And there is a problem here, because this is a part of executor, but still, it is a specific logic for our heap. If we have a heap with undo lock, there, there is direct access to the last version and uh, we don't need any logic with uh, uh, this search for uh, the last or first version. Or there is another logic of uh, searching in the search of the versions. So here we need a refactoring. Refactoring lies in the approach when we put this logic of traveling into the hip. So this log would look for the last version, lock it, and uh, replace it. Then we won't have any problems, and inside of uh, the storage we can make all the work that depends on it. And one more thing, uh, the serious change, is that if even if we have TIT, tuple in identifier, it won't identify tuple, it's, it won't identify the certain version of line. In case of undo lock, with undo lock, we have the last type of tip uh, with the set of, uh, pre uh, of previous versions. And for us to find uh, the defined version, we need a snapshot. snapshot. Therefore, where everywhere when where we need to identify the version of a line, we need not only heap update and heap delete, we need uh, to take snapshot along with it. Snapshot is a kind, it can be used as an assertion. So if you get a tuple that was not seen, it's incorrect. But for example, in hip with undo lock, this snapshot can be useful because if uh, someone is working in the isolation regime repeatable reap, want to refresh a line, and then in the end we can uh, see that this is not the last, latest version of the line.
Therefore, we need this instrument. The next group of debugging is the operation with index access methods. We don't want to write separate index access methods for every engine. engine. Imagine we have uh, heap with underlock. Uh, we don't want to write uh, our B3 for it. Therefore, we need to to work with the index access methods API to provide the possibility for the most types of engines to work with it. Here's how it should be made. Just for example, now in index tuple we are installing the tuples. We can put them in or take a pack of them and fully scan indexes and delete them and uh, uh, then uh, transfer to bitmap. In bitmap we are transferring tids actual and inactual. But there are many limitations in it. We need to have a tid, tid, TID. But if it's the secondary index for an index organized table, that means we don't need to save tid, we need to save uh, primary keys. And this is also a limitation, we cannot delete them, we cannot refresh them. So to delete them, we uh, can we sh we ought to make it voluntary. We need to store the load, the involuntary load, tuple instead of tid. This is the scheme with API, how it should be realized with an index tuple. We can insert it, we can delete it and update it with any payload. Well, delete can be the same with the same interface for the cases when this payload is uh, TIT. And in the cases when the payload is not TIT, we can manipulate with the tuples using the functions insert, update and delete. And this delete function can provide you a plus, a huge plus uh, that applies not only to the engines. When the vacuum works, vacuum is uh, scanning everything, even the tab tables and it, its resources. But if the table but if, if there were only several lines deleted in a table, you don't need to go through the whole index. You can just find the keys and delete it. This helps you to establish your work step by step, receiving profits from every tree, uh, every step you make. One more thing that should be in redefined in the indexes is the possibility to reuse OP classes. In some cases we receive LSM or something like this. It's logical to, it's logical that LSM can be uh, chosen for every operations that you see on the screen. So LP3 or LSM can be the same. And the dubbing of classes is not the best way. Therefore, we need to think of one entity like PGOP class type. And this entity will be something like a comparable item. That means that we can uh, create P3 and uh, that will be attached to the comparable item. And for this comparable item, all the classes will be already defined. One more uh, about LSM. If the LSM will be the index method, the LSM is uh, a type of an index organized table where the index will be LSM. 
and to receive the full profit from uh, the use of LSM as the primary storage of uh, lines and to preserve the correctness of database, you need to use SQL, uh, something like a support of a blind update or absurd, but only on the basis of SQL. How does LSM work? It, uh, it takes our operation like insert, update and delete and writes uh, down uh, on the upper level of the tree. And then later on it will be in the middle of the tree. So it goes down. Everything is understood, understandable uh, with insert. We don't have any check constraints. That means that we can guarantee, we can pay, paste line with guarantee. With update it's not so easy. Classically, LSM should allow us to take the update and push it through two levels and increase counter by one. But the first thing that arises is that we don't know whether we will refresh something or not, because we don't know whether we can find the key or not. Or we can uh, create a mistake or an error. So and the client can think that everything is committed and still the error will be present. That means that we need to have the operations that uh, won't uh, be ended with a mistake. So it could be a special field when your integers are incremented more than maximum, it will be note. So it's not so feasible, but it can be documented and the user can know about this and the conduct will be correct. The same can be made with absurd and delete. And accordingly, the same can be done with triggers. The triggers can be triggered when they are in the depth of the tree, when they were applied there. In this situation, we would rather not support triggers. Now I want to tell you about the current state of patch and about the vector of the development. There is a trend in mailing lists and it's a huge thread. 144 messages, I suppose, but I think the thread uh, is uh, yet is now beginning. The last latest version includes 12 patches. The developers are Arvara Herrera, then Hariba Bukomi, and then I also made some effort to alter this patch to sort out the refactoring of log of tuple that I was speaking about. The patches are ordered by the introduction of IP, then refactoring and correction of IP. We've discussed this question and we arrived at the decision that we need to make refactoring first, then uh, the huge amount of patches working, and then we have a beautiful interface that is made by two patches. The plus here is that you can commit patches with refactoring and some of them can fall in Postgres 11 because they're only making code logically and understandably. Actually, that's all. And I hope that pluggable everything will be in Postgres and Postgres will be something like the thing that you see here. Thank you very much. We have questions. To Alexander. Please introduce yourself. Dmitry Varonian, Kyber, Kybertechnik. Do I understand you correctly that there will be a set of tuples like uh, in all engines and uh, each agent will have a pool of uh, tuples that can be realized and fields? Uh, you are speaking about system fields. 
I don't know. Uh, now we are using teeth offsets and so on. But if we take a hip tuple as the general tuple and add some uh, our properties, is it possible then? Yes, it's my mistake. I did not tell you about this. Pluggable tuple format is one of the patches that uh, is now under consideration. So different engines will have different formats. And if we will uh, rebuild all formats into one format, we can uh, lose something. And speaking about the columns in system, then I can tell that if there will be a set of minimum columns, in uh, every engine, and the engine can also provide uh, its own uh, columns. And the second question, did you consider development of uh, an engine, of a universal engine for full text indexing? I think full text index room is working correctly, but I think this, but this approach that you were presented. But still, speaking about full text search, we were not thinking about this. Our view is that we can manage the full text search issue on the basis of the existing engine. So, like the count star, we can uh, find everything not by not scanning all the hip. Perhaps we will think about it. How can be this pluggable storage combined with the optimizer? Because the optimizer wants to know as more as possible, and the IPs want to transfer the less the better. Our situation is the following. Today, in Postgres, we have the custom nodes. And we can prescribe our custom ways, like lightweight plan pass, set real pass hook, that allows you to provide alternative means of scanning for a separate table. That means it can be adequately uh, aligned It's just the storage provides for a callback. Like, I want to scan your table uh, with such order of assortment. Please uh, provide me with the types uh, of actions that are uh, possible for you. And in this list, you can see custom or custom explain. And so this is the way how it will work. Uh, now I'm speaking in the first line about OLTP engines, so line-oriented Чтобы гист 
он просто поддерживал и э, батаричный его класс в том числе. Ну, кстати, да, это хорошая идея. Спасибо. Да. О, 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 знаешь, вот появились движки, э, вот, которые делают э, то, что там вот еще. Нет ли у вас обсуждения, да, вот, чтобы эти колоночные движки, но без транзакций? Ну, то есть фишка это колоночная транзакция? Нет, ну, ну понятно, да. Ну, то есть колоночные колоночные хранения, оно вообще не, не очень с, с транзакциями дружит. Как правило, если делается колоночный, так скажем, колоночный движок, поддерживающий транзакции, то это, как правило, Разумевает, что хранятся колонки, а рядом еще есть э, хранилище для строк, в котором, э, собственно, держатся артели, и периодически в эти колонки заливаются. Обычно так поступают, когда есть колоночный движок, якобы там, с поддержкой транзакций, там, обновлений и так далее. То есть это уже гибридный движок получается. А, вы спросили, спросили по поводу PIS, то есть это ну, по поводу, получается, типа, таких схем, которые сразу могут взять, не знаю, там, эффективно считать какой-нибудь агрегат, да, сразу в колонке. Я правильно понял вопрос? Лиса. Я имел в виду, что предполагается ли, например, вот, скажем так, расслабить требования, чтобы все было в транзакции, ну, например, там, эстетических э, функционалов. Ну, пусть э, это будет набитый движком, но он не транзакционный будет. А вот речь идет, и вот это не Не, а о том, что, что поддержка транзакций была опциональной, да, об этом да, в том числе речь идет. А, ну, кстати, по поводу близов, такая шутка была у нас, что а, база данных будущего, не делаешь не запрос, делаешь при П, при этом тебе автоматический завод печатает флаг, вставляет свой сервер, который оптимально исполняет твой запрос, а потом уже экзекьюзит делаешь, это плата используется, и все очень быстро работает. А следующий вопрос. А, это вопрос, вопрос про колоночные движки. А, а, вот, допустим, даже с одной стороны делали IP, а, чтобы сделать организатор, который сможет проектировать запросы, но ведь сам, как бы, текущая окрейка модель выполнения с по дуплоку вытаскивания, как бы, движкам mm -hmm. вообще как бы не выглядит, и вот, что вы писали, привет, на колонке. А раз, если у нас есть любой запрос, а как? Как это не бороться? Ну, собственно, вот как раз вот на этом фронте адрес клиент работает, и у него были предложения сделать возможность вытаскивать не по строке, а вытаскивать строки пачки. Ну, между нодами передавать пачки строк, и если, соответственно, пачки, они могут уже быть ну, в транспонированном виде, в виде пачки столов. Вот, и тогда это, это ну, эта ситуация улучшится. А, потому что на самом деле, даже на обычных движках, по построечных, если это выполняется какой-то сложный лап запрос, все равно всплывают проблемы из-за того, именно из-за этой полумодели по одной строке. Уже, ну, уже даже в этом случае. Потому что там получается, что, ну, например, неэффективно очень кэш процессора, потому что мы берем какой-то один дубл и тут начинаем его выключить и все это делать. А если мы а, возьмем и будем пачками передавать, то у нас лагается кэш. Ну, то есть это опоздаешь. Вот это мне не приведет до этого, во-первых, не ку, а кошку. Да. А вот на этом шифе, то есть ваш адрес выше, Тут есть некая тоже такая дискуссия на тему того, нужен ли пуш, если у вас есть а, передача пачками или не нужен. Я сейчас точно ответ вам сейчас не скажу. А, здравствуйте, Александр. У меня вопрос. А в случае пешков, которые будут работать на антологии, в принципе, для них автоваку, мне вообще ваку будет не нужно. Но мы активно встроим а, в сам процесс, в текущей реализации. Я так понимаю, хорошо включено. То есть как часть движков будут иметь автоваку, но будут порождать какой-то процесс, который будет вытаскивать свои ресурсы. Для части этого не будем. Но тут, скорее всего, у 
движка, у него будет мини колбэк делать ему вакуум. Вот. Соответственно, этот колбэк он может быть либо определен, либо не определен. То есть, грубо говоря, ну, те же, тот же автоваку, те же воркеры, они могут просто выполнять там красную функцию, предоставляемую движком. Потому что на самом деле, ну, в Амбузоке там не всегда, ну, не всегда на процентов не нужна не нужно никакая очистка. Да? То есть, а, например, там бывает там перш, да, который проходит с ламбулом, там что-то что тоже с ним делает, очищает. И получается, что в данном случае мы а, просто возьмем а этот перш и привяжем тоже на колбэк, который, который у нас вызывается а, автоваку. Примерно так, но при этом ну, мы посмотрим, что будет, когда и первый прибудет свою работу, потому что посмотреть на полностью весь дизайн того, что они придумали с ламбулом. Ну, в любом случае, это ну, решаемая задача, чтобы, чтобы не было автовакуума или чтобы вместо автовакуума выполнялся, ну, вместо вакуума автовакуум был что-то другое. А что насчет бокалов, как их собирают капить? Да. Ну, и вот это там работает. Ну, это не так. Это там работает, но если эти движки, они будут нормально рекавариться, под рисовым валом, вот, то, в принципе, для них должна, ну, если у них будет такая же, ну, на большем уровне вал будет так же работать, то, в принципе, для них рекавер тоже должен сработать под рисовым, да, и тоже там можно будет скопировать содержимое всей базы, вот, потом взять и там, накатить валы и получить консистентное состояние. Вот другой вопрос требует больше проработки, это есть какие-то движки, у которых не на большем уровне вал. То же самое инмент, да, мы там кладем на диск полный старшок, а потом вал пишем на уровне строки. Вот, в принципе, полный, ну, полный, если полный, то как, да, то вроде бы тоже, наверное, должно сработать, но это требует еще определенного изучения. И, конечно, вот все вот эти вот наработки для инкрементального бэкапа их тоже нужно будет как-то немного пересмотреть. Я боюсь, что первая версия у нас инкрементальный бэкап будет поддерживать вот эти полковые хранилища, а потом мы будем думать, как для инкрементального бэкапа какую запишу. Да? Спасибо за доклад. У меня такой вопрос. А движок, который вот с ангулом делается, там есть сейчас какие-то сравнение по его производительности с обычным сортовакуумом. То есть он результат какой-то перформанс ну, прирост. Пока еще нет, он это единичный движок, который еще не опубликован, но они обещают буквально вот вот на через несколько недель его опубликовать. Вот. Собственно, мы посмотрим, мы по бичмарке. То есть сами они пока никакого спойлера и не давали. Поэтому... Ну, спойлер там есть, спойлер вот этот. Поэтому можете смотреть на статью Роберта Хас, но там никаких количественных измерений пока нет. Понятно, спасибо. Еще вопросы? Предусматривается какой-нибудь процесс конвертации в данном установке? Ну, вот, взял, попробовал, похоронил ладно, не, не понравилось. Да? Апгрейд сделан и все переконвертировалось в бойке. Опять не понравился ему, что они в нем будут как-то рассказывать. На самом деле, тут задача очень похожа на пожеребак. Что делает пожеребак? Он сделал лежать без блока, но он, по сути, просто копирует табличку, потом берет, ставит на старую табличку триггера, которая обновляет новую. Вернее, вначале ставит триггер, а потом потихоньку копирует. Таким образом он догоняется до актуального состояния и потом свободит. Я думаю, что ну, для, включая, для переноса данных между одним хранилищем и другим нужно ну, какой-то похожий механизм, потому что ну, если это разные хранилища, то по-другому, как на уровне срок все копирует, вряд ли что-то хорошее придумаешь. Вот. Но хороший поинт, что ну, такой механизм, типа а-ля кошерипа, при этом возможно делать, там, не знаю, переделать на базе логической репликации, потому что вы имеете ядре, и чтобы он как-то автоматно все проходило, не требуя от пользователя очень больших часов движения. Ну, я думаю, это хорошее направление. 